Hi, this is Stray Pass. Hold on, I think um, my uh, let me see if I can adjust this camera a little bit. No, not that way. Okay, hold on for a minute. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Anyway, welcome to my Blu-ray update for the week beginning April 26, uh, 2015. Okay, I went to two places. I went to Barnes & Noble on Friday, and I went to Best Buy. Kind of took it easy this weekend. Uh, i got a big week coming up. My birthday is uh, Thursday, and uh, so I'm off work Thursday and Friday. The Avengers is coming out on Friday. I'm going to try to see it twice. And um, Saturday, I'm going to see the fight at my brother's house in Jersey, so that should be good. So a lot of good things. A short work week that's gonna work three days and off the rest of the week. Get to see the fight, get to see the Avengers twice. So it's a good week coming up. Okay, now I went to uh, Best Buy and Barnes and Noble. I'll go to the Best Buy thing first since I only bought one thing from them. And I got the last one in the trilogy. I got you know, Taken 3. Okay, which was actually a lot better than than the second one, and a nice way to I guess wrap it up. Okay, Liam Neeson always entertaining, and Porter Whitaker is in this as well. It's a cop that's chasing him, so that was good. Had to pick that up to complete the trilogy. Okay, now I went to Barnes and Noble and I had two twenty percent off coupons, which they sent me in the mail, which is good, and I renewed my membership for another year. Okay, in Barnes and Noble, so. That was good. I wasn't that bad. So, like I said, they have, you know, the prices are way too high. But they, the good, the balance of that is that they have a lot of sales and they send you coupons and so twenty percent off coupons and stuff. And then, like I said, they have a lot of sales. Sometimes they have fifty percent off of stuff or buy two get one free or something like that. And they have a lot of and plus as a member you get an extra ten percent off, which is a good thing. So, even though their prices are too high, they do have better variety than. Uh, the best buy that I have around here and even the one downtown. Anyway, so I bought a few titles. Hold on. Let me pull them out of here. Okay. Yep, here we go. Uh, first thing I bought was Men, Women, and Children, which is uh, one of those movies with an ensemble cast. Uh, uh, Adam Sandler's in this. Uh, I think a lot of Ansel Elgar, you know, the guy from uh, uh, the uh, Divergent movies and and uh, the kind of movie where the girl was dying of cancer. He was in that as well. And uh, Jennifer Garner's in this. And it's supposed to be about all these different people and stuff. I actually, I actually wanted to see this for a while. Saw the trailer for this. Looks good, so I bought that. Men, Women, and Children. And, of course, I bought... Uh, Working Girl, uh, Harrison Ford, Melanie Griffin, Shagoni Weaver, and Melanie Griffin plays the working girl of the title, who's trying to look to uh, better her life. And Harrison Ford is a little like a big executive, and Shagoni Weaver is like the bitch boss. <laughs> but I remember really liking this movie when it came out all those years ago. So happy to pick that up. Now this movie is a well, I love old-fashioned Hollywood movies, and this is Tyrone Power, Gene Turney, and The Razor's Edge. Now, I saw the remake, believe it or not, of this movie with Bill Murray, Bill Murray, who did the remake, one of his more serious roles. And I like the story, so I want to see the original and see how the original turned out. So I'm anxious to watch that, so look at my review of this pretty soon. The Razor's Edge. About a guy, I guess it's about a guy that uh, starts as, uh, let me, what does it say? Uh, screen legend Tyrone Power stars an engaging classic based on a W. Somerset Morgan's best-selling novel. Despite being offered an impressive job when he returns from World War I, Larry Darrell instead opts for the Paris Bohemian lifestyle, followed by a soul searching trip to the Far East. Okay. After his beautiful fiance, Jean Turney, loses patience and spiritual, with a spiritual seeker and marries a wealthy man, Larry finds himself drawn to Sophie and Baxter, an Oscar winning performance. Okay. An old friend, newly widowed, Sophie has. Descendant into alcoholism, a state from which Larry hopes to save her in the thought provoking film, nominated for four Academy Awards. It sounds great, and I'm, I love old classic Hollywood movies, so glad to pick that up. 
Now, this one I've seen a couple of times in there, but and I, I love Jack Lemmon as an actor. And this is Star Jack Lemmon and Bernie Lissy, I guess that's her name. And this is How to Murder Your Wife. It's a comedy, of course. And uh, about a guy who's, uh, who's like a successful cartoonist. And he, one drag and I, at a, as a, I think at a bachelor party, he marries this Italian girl who doesn't speak any English. And then he can't get divorced from her. And then he com comedically tries to come up ways to try to kill her. <laughs> and that sounds interesting to me. So I like Jack Lemmon. And so I want to see that, see how that turns out. <laughs> okay, and this, this this is a, I think it's a shop factory. Yeah, screen factory, excuse me. This is a classic class of 1984. I remember this when it came out way back then. Uh, Perry King is the teacher, and I think Timothy Van Patten is one of the, you know, the delinquents that basically targets. This is like, I think, set in the future where the kids are out of control, and he's like a teacher, a new teacher, Perry King, and, and he runs a, a file of uh, Timothy Van Patten and his local hoods. I think they even target his, him and his wife, and he has to basically fight back. Okay, so um, this is a collector's edition, so I'm actually uh, actually looking forward to watching this again. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Okay, but I remember this being really good when I saw it, so I picked that up. Now, this last thing is a TV show. I, I've been kind of wanting to get this for a while. Um, I kind of noticed this, I think, I think, midway through its run. It only lasts, I think, about two seasons, I think, of this show. But it was really, really good. I really liked the show. The way, and this was created by Brian Fuller. Yeah. And of course, I'm talking about Pushing Daisies. There it is. It's season one and season two. It was 50% off, or, or actually 60% off since I'm a member. Okay. And, but this is a really, really unusual show about this guy who can't really touch the woman he loves, I think, because he has this strange power, I think, to, um, He's born that he anything he touches I think dies or something and he becomes like a baker and he has a uh, like a best friend played by uh, this, what's this guy's name? Uh, hold on, uh, hold on. What's the guy's name? Uh, hold on. What's the guy's name? Yeah, Emerson, well the character's name is Emerson Cog. I forgot what his what his name the real life guy's name is. Uh, hold on. Oh, Chi Chi McBride. Okay, that's his name. I'm sorry. Chi Chi McBride. He plays like his best friend who's like a detective and he helps him basically because he can touch people that have died and, and talk to them for like, I think 30 seconds or whatever. And then they, that's how they investigate these crimes and stuff. And of course, like I said, he's in love with with this chick played by Anne, Anna Farrell. He's in love. Well, let me read the description. Every so often comes a, a show that's very different. Wonderfully different. Person Daisy, TV guy's Matt Roche, restores my faith in TV's ability to amuse and chat and entertain. It's the story of Ned, that's the guy played by Lee Pace, a lonely pie maker whose touch can reanimate the dead. Neat, but there's a hitch. If Ned touches the person again, the miracle is reversed. If he doesn't, a bystander goes toes up. What to do? Easy. Team up with a private eye, that's Chi Chi McBride, being murdered victims back just long enough to discover who done it and collect the rewards. Things go well until Ned's boyhood sweetheart, sweetie, is the next dear. Departed. He can't resist bringing her back for keeps. Dig the wit, style, and quirky romance. If you're not laughing, you may be, need a visit from Ned. Okay, and this is a, a, a great show. I watched. I think, I, like I said, I, I think I came midway through the the uh, second season of this. I don't think I saw the first season, but it was just a really good show. I absolutely loved it, and they canceled it way before its time. This show is one of just a fantastic show. One of the best sh shows in a brief run. So I'm. Happy to get this, and I've been wanting to get this. I know it's on Blu-ray, but I saw the DVDs there, and they were 60% off, <laughs> so I had to snatch them up. Okay, so glad to have Pushing Daisies, and I'm gonna probably watch that when I'm on vacation and stuff, just to watch. I just absolutely love, like I said, Lee Pace and Anna Farrell had good chemistry, and I absolutely love that show, Pushing Daisies, really good. Anyway, let me know what you think of these titles. Feel free to leave comments down below, and also I'll let you know I'm gonna do. I'm gonna probably be tweeting because I have a Twitter account. Okay, and um, so when I make videos and stuff, they go. I'm happy to get uploaded to my uh, to my Twitter account. Uh, so if you want to, um, and I'll, what I'll also do is I'll leave a link to my Twitter account in case anybody wants to follow me. Uh, I'm getting used to this Twitter thing, and I'm actually happy with it. What I do is sometimes I you know take pictures at my job of what I eat for lunch or whatever. <laughs> you know, just trying to do interesting stuff, and I'm gonna try to. Do more of that 
like like this week at work. I'm only gonna be there three days, but we gotta got a lot of work to do. So maybe I might take a picture or stuff at me, so people can see what I do actually. Which I like. I don't know if I. I think I described it once in a video. I make posters. I make uh, booklets and brochures and stuff for people. You know, we work on a print center. Me and one other guy, and we make posters and mercy cards, wallet cards, and that type of stuff. Okay, and we send them out all to all the different people that work for the company I work for. And uh, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting job. And like I said, it's just two of us there, so it's I like that. And you know, and it's a it's a good job. I've been there since two thousand four, I believe. So it's been I've been there over eleven years, and it's a good job. And I'm happy and and. and I'm happy there for the most part, but like I said in my uh, vlog one day, what I really want to do is I want to own a movie theater. That's what I really, really want to do. And I may really look into that seriously somewhere down the line just to see if that's even a possibility. I know you got to get investors and stuff like that, but that's what I would really like to do. That's just to, if I could just even if just own like an AMC movie theater, I think that would be totally so cool just to do that. Okay, I think that would be rewarding because I, I would be helping people that love movies, providing a service for people that love movies as much as I do. They can come to see and entertain, and plus I can make money at the same time. So I think it's a win-win. So anyway, anyway, let me know what you think of these titles. Feel free to leave comments down below. And like I said, I'll leave a link to my Twitter account in the description box below. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care. I also, uh, like I said, my Facebook account is, you know, just type my name in there and my, you know, my Facebook account will come up there too. So I'll, what I'll do too, I'll also leave a link to my Facebook account as well. I have a Facebook account as well. So I'm trying to get with the technology. Okay. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long. Take care.